Welcome to my online American history course. My name is Kim Groves and I am going to be your instructor on this journey through American history. Now before we even get, get started exploring any content in American history, we're going to take a moment to explore the question of what exactly is American history. You'll see me the bottom of my paper. I like I still like to work in paper even though I am working from a screen as well. As I said before, my name is Kim Groves and I am a matriculated teacher. This is basically a big, big fancy word basically means I'm trained to be a teacher and taught in two states over 13 years. I graduated with a bachelor's degree from Salisbury University in 1998 and then received my Master of Arts in Teaching from the same university in 2003. I started teaching in 2003 and got married in 2006 and I changed school systems when my husband and I moved to Lynchburg, Virginia. I remained in the Bedford County, Virginia system until I left in 2017. I left for two reasons. The first was that my husband had been transferred to Florida and we were moving and the second was that my daughter was six months old and I wanted to be present for her first. I realized as a full-time teacher of other children, which I absolutely adored, I couldn't do that. So I, and I also knew that I couldn't teach against my beliefs in Florida. Now at that time, they adhered to Common Core, which was an educational philosophy I vehemently, vehemently disagreed with. Now, by now, Florida has completely eliminated Common Core and, um, but at that time, I was unwilling to teach something that I knew was detrimental to uh, child development. In 2018, my husband was transferred yet again to Northern Virginia, but by this time I had suffered the loss of my mother and we made a choice to make our home in Maryland at, her, at my late mother's home. And I would take on the responsibility of helping my father who had lost my stepmother a few months prior with his business. My father passed away in 2020, but it was not due to COVID. I feel like I have to say that because 2020 was like a year. And I took on the full responsibility of the business and began tutoring part-time. I then rediscovered how much I enjoyed teaching and looked for ways to teach and tutor. I built a staff to help me with my other business and tutored more full-time. Along with my staff, I took on the full-time responsibility and care of two teenage boys whom I affectionately call my adopted sons, Seth and Kyle. And you see them down here. Kyle is the one wearing the bow tie and Seth is in the black and white picture. Um, I wouldn't change a thing about my crazy chaotic life and I'm thrilled to add a virtual teacher to the mix. And you see um, this one picture over here where I have my, uh, it's a portrait that I had taken. And then this uh, second one is a picture of me and my daughter at a baseball game this past uh, school year. And the middle picture is a picture I took a number of years ago with uh, my husband. Of, or of my husband. Okay, now I'm always going to, whenever I teach a class, I'm always going to post an agenda of the day. That's going to be a rough plan of the topics we're going to be talking about. It's not going to be super detailed. It's not meant to be. So it's meant to show you exactly what major topics we're going to be talking about. So today we're going to be talking about what American history is, why we should study American history, what we're going to be talking about, the themes in American history, and what you need to bring for this course. So what exactly is American history? Now, Cornell Law School defines American history this way. They say the term, quote, traditional American history, unquote, means A, the significant constitutional, political, intellectual, and economic, and foreign policy trends and issues that have shaped the course of American history, and B, the key episodes, turning points, and leading figures involved in the constitutional, political, intellectual, diplomatic, and economic history of the United States. So Cornell Law pretty much has got that nailed. So I find this to be a pretty comprehensive view of what American history is, as it does differ significantly from world history. Those of you that follow my world history series will know the differences in the definitions of world and American history. So continue. So as we're continuing on with our what is American history, from ushistory.org we find a great definition that acknowledges history's ancient roots. 
The word history comes from the Greek word historia, which means to learn or know by inquiry. In the pieces that follow, we encourage you to probe, dispute, dig deeper, inquire. History is not static, it's fluid. It changes and grows and becomes richer and more complex when any individual interacts with it. Knowledge of history is empowering. An event is but the furthest ripple from an ever expanding wave that may have started eddying outward hundreds of years ago. One who sees history is able to harness the power of that wave's entire journey. Which I think that can also apply to world history as well, but I think um, it's good to give varying definitions. So, you know, I don't want my, my lectures to be boring. Now, why should we study American history? So let's, let's get into the question of why we should study American history. We look at the reasoning from three different sources. So the University of Wisconsin and Madison comes through for us again. They give us this definition because history gives us the tools to analyze and explains, explain problems in the past. It positions us to see patterns that might otherwise be invisible in the present, thus providing a crucial perspective for understanding and solving current and future problems. Um, this the um, this uh, gives us this definition. While historians.org tells us we should study it because it is essential to individuals and society, and because it harbors beauty. That isn't to say there isn't some horrible parts of history that aren't beautiful, but they all weave together to form the wonderful tapestry that makes America a unique and vibrant place to live and different from every other place in the world. Finally, MMOC.org, which is a group of massive online open courses similar to TED Talks, states this, which is very similar to a definition. So they say, studying history helps us understand how events in the past made things the way they are today. With lessons from the past, we not only learn about ourselves and how we came to be, but also develop the ability to avoid mistakes and create better paths for our societies. So this is very similar to a definition and explanation I gave in my online world history class, if you're following that as well. So moving on to what will we be studying in this course? So our course of study will be comprehensive, spanning from the geology of the new world all the way to the new millennium. We will also be taking various side quests, as I said before, into topics of interest to deepen our understanding of the topic we are studying. I will be posting various extension activities and additional information on my blog, so I invite you to take a look for more activities. If you're using this video series as a homeschool lesson or even for a school classroom, you will find this to be a comprehensive video and lesson. All you have to do is print, watch, and go. I have done all the planning and work, so you don't have to. If you are interested in the text I'm using, I'm using the American Pageant from Cengage Learning, the 16th edition, AP edition. I purchased mine online from Amazon, but you can feel free to Google for the cheapest price. So um, I don't get any money from recommending these textbooks. I actually used the American Pageant when I was in um, high school. That was my AP US uh, text. So I find it to be a, a really decent one. So I just since I'm familiar with how that text is sort of laid out, I have uh, just continued on using that text. I just used the most updated edition. So we're going to explore the 12 themes of American history, and we're gonna explore them briefly here. So our first theme is American diversity. So America is called the great melting pot for a reason. We are built as a nation of legal immigrants who each came here seeking a new and better life for themselves and their family. So the diversity of the American people and the relationships among different groups, the roles of race, class, ethnicity, and gender in the history of the United States constitutes our diversity. Our second theme, and you'll notice these are alphabetical, so we're not going to address each of these themes. They're kind of all interwoven together, but these are alphabetically arranged. The second theme is American identity. Because of our makeup as a nation of immigrants, we have a unique cultural identity that is different from any other country in the world. We have regional cultural differences, and, you know, we all make jokes about the other areas. I hear more Southern jokes than I care to admit to. So views of the American national character and ideas about American exceptionalism Recognizing regional differences within the context of what it means to be an American constitute our American identity. There are jo 
jokes about East Coast versus West Coast, North versus South, Northeast versus Southeast, Southwest versus Midwest. Oh, and my husband's from the Midwest originally, and he's very much, you know, he jokes about my, my, he tells me I have an accent, and I'm like, no, honey, I don't have the accent. You're the one with the accent. So our culture our, is based on a blending of the many different cultures our country is built on. While these cultures sometimes come into conflict, they eventually blend and combine to create the unique fabric of the United States. Diverse individual and collective expressions through literature, art, philosophy, music, theater, and film throughout, the US, throughout US history. Popular culture and the dimensions of cultural conflict within American society constitute our culture. Next, if demographic changes. Demographic changes within our society tend to lead to cultural shifts as well. Things that were accepted as norms even 20 years ago are now rejected as old, antiquated, and out of date. Changes in birth, marriage, and death rates, life expectancy, and family patterns, population size and density, the economic, social, and political effects of immigration, internal migration, and migration networks constitute demographic changes. And I think one of the most surprising things, and this isn't a demographic change, it's not a cultural change, was somebody brought up that 20 years ago, there was no such thing as an iPod or an iPhone before 9-11. And here we are in a post 9-11 world and we have iPhones and they're eliminating the iPod. And I think that's just like, it's just crazy to see the, the, the ebb and flow and rise and fall of certain technologies, even in 20 years. Economic transformations is our next theme. Maybe it would be helpful if I advanced the slide. We have seen our economy move from one built on purely farming and manufacturing to one built on technology and finance. Our economy is constantly transforming as we open new doors with other countries and new groups and technologies emerge. Changes in trade, commerce, and technology across time, the effects of capitalist development, labor and, labor and unions, and consumerism are part of our economic transformation. Our next theme is the environment. Our history is full of efforts to preserve our amazing environment and those things that are uniquely American. We even have enshrined environmental protection in our laws with the creation of the National Parks Act. President Theodore Roosevelt felt so strongly about preserving the uniqueness that was America, he designated many areas as protected national parks. We have many laws that protect our air, water, and ground from harmful contaminants. Ideas about the consumption and preservation, I'm sorry, consumption and conservation of natural resources, the impact of population growth, industrialization, pollution in urban and suburban expansion constitute the theme of the environment. Next, we have globalization. As part of our growth and change as a nation, we have engaged with other nations in campaigns of international relations and trade. We have not only exchanged goods and money, but we have also exchanged cultural ideas and practices. So engagement with the rest of the world from the 15th century to the present, colonialism, mercantilism, global hegemony, development of markets, imperialism, and cultural exchange all contribute to globalization. And many people use the phrase globalization as a bad thing, Sometimes it can actually be very, very good because we do get the, that. That's how we get our unique cultural, uh, our, our unique fabric of American is through our uh, being American is is a is because of that cultural exchange and that that blending of cultures that we have. And, and I mean, I think we see it a lot, um, especially among different, especially as inner groups intermingle and, and mix. So as we have more urban suburban influences we see that and that's a good thing sometimes politics and citizenship our form of government is unique in that it was the first time our form of government a constitutional republic had ever been tried prior to our great experiment every government was ruled by a monarch since our founding many other governments have based their form of government off of ours making our unique form one of the most replicated in the world Colonial and regulatory 
I'm sorry, colonial and revolutionary legacies. Wow, I need to learn how to read. American political traditions, growth of democracy, and the development of the modern state, defining citizenship, struggles for civil rights, all constitute um, our politics and citizenship. So I'm going to sit here for just a moment on this because I forgot to advance, because I'm going to make mistakes, because I am not perfect, because this is a kind of a new format for me doing uh, this. Um, and I'm also working with a mouse, so I'm, I'm, I'm working on getting one of those like clicker thingies that I could just kind of sit here and hold it. I don't have to deal with my mouse. So our next, um, our next theme is reform. Reform. So our government has been at the forefront of major reforms with things such as human rights, environmental rights, voting rights and even codifying the end of slavery and continuing to make strides in fighting human trafficking and other forms of human oppression. So diverse movements focusing on a broad range of issues, including anti-slavery, education, labor, temperance, which is anti-drinking, um, labor, women's rights, civil rights, gay rights, war, public health and government, all are part of reform. Next, we have religion. The United States has, has many colonies first founded as an escape for religious minorities and for people being persecuted for practicing their religious beliefs. As a matter of fact, the state in which I live, Maryland, was founded as a refuge for Catholics being persecuted in England. So we actually were one of the first colonies to have an actual law that that actually codified freedom of religion. So you could come here, didn't have to be Catholic to come here, and you could practice whatever religion you wanted to practice, but it was actually founded to protect Catholics um, from, um, uh, uh, from uh, being persecuted. So um, the freedom to practice one's own religion has been so woven into the fabric of our country that we made it part of the First Amendment to our Constitution. The variety of religious beliefs and practices in America from prehistory to the, pre to the 21st century, influence of religion on politics, econ economics, and society all constitute the theme of religion. One of the, the um, big ones that we're going to discuss is slavery and its legacies in, the, in North America. Now, while every country in the world has experienced slavery at some level, and some countries actually still do experience slavery, uh, uh, experience slavery, America has learned from her experiences and worked to rectify the errors of the past by assuring all people are treated fairly and equally under the law. While we are not a perfect nation, we are one that values and honors what has been done to rectify the horrors of slavery and have done much to move forward from the past mistakes of that period of time. Systems of slave labor and other forms of unfree labor, i.e. indentured servitude, contract labor in Native American societies, the Atlantic world and the American South and West, the economics of slavery and its racial dimensions and patterns of resistance and the long-term economic, political and societal uh, and social effects of slavery constitute the theme of slavery and its legacies. Our next theme is war and diplomacy. Over our history, we have fought many wars for both our independence and the freedom of the world. Even when attempting to embrace neutrality, we have endeavored to help those fighting against tyranny, and eventually we have abandoned our neutrality in order to turn the tide of the fight against tyranny and toward freedom. So armed conflict from the pre-colonial period to the 21st century and the impact of war on American foreign policy and on politics the economy and society constitute the theme of war and diplomacy. So our last 12 slides have been brought to you by edwardcoin.net, which I found to be an amazing um, resource for this information. So this slide is actually, if you're watching my world history series, you'll find it's actually identical. What do I need to bring? You need to bring a willingness to learn and an open mind, be willing to have your beliefs challenged. Um, be willing to have your beliefs challenged. So be willing to say, I never thought of it that way, or wow, that, that's a unique way of seeing things, or I didn't even really know that before. So I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to come away from one of my talks actually knowing something that you didn't know before. 
So be willing to learn and bring an open mind. Optional, the text I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, a pen, a pencil, the fol a folder to keep any printouts or worksheets in, and an, a notebook for taking any notes. Okay, again, this is a replicate slide from my world history presentation. How can you contact Way? There are three different ways you can get up with me, three. You can reach me at mayorofshadpoint at gmail.com. You can leave comments on this video, and you may reach out to me on my blog or website at fairandbalancedsocialstudies.blogspot.com or kimgirds.net. They'll both take you to the same place. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that like and subscribe button on this video and my channel so you always know when I drop new content. Um, I will be uh, posting my first lesson in both world history and American history sometime next week. I'm not sure what day, so be on the lookout. I'll also be posting a what is American government intro similar to this one uh probably sometime next week as well so as i'm gearing up back to getting back to school so um again hit the like and subscribe buttons down here below leave me comments let me know what you think and i will be posting some work on my google drive for you to work with that goes along with this lesson again this is kim groves Hoping you've enjoyed this lesson and I hope to see you on the at my next lesson. Thank you very much and have a great day.